Hey guys, it's Tony from Tony Teaches Tech, and today I'm going to continue my customization tutorial uh, that I started last time. I'll put the video up here. Um, it's basically setting up a travel blog using WordPress, specifically a Generate Press theme within their site library. This is what we left off with last time, something that kind of looked like this. But since then, uh, I did some customization, I guess, off video. But I want to catch you guys up with how I got to the point where I'm at today. And the point where I'm at today is this right here, a very vibrant, um, awesome looking website. I'm really proud of myself for getting here. And I want to share with you the steps that I took to get to this point from last time. So make sure you're caught up in the video um, and then I'm gonna keep going. So let's, let's hop right in and into it. Right here on my web homepage, my travel blog, I have the site title, Tony Travels, and a little blurb here, learn how to travel the world on a budget. I got the four most recent posts, and these are still the, the stock posts that came with the theme. I didn't write these. Um, another little blurb up here, welcoming my readers to my blog, a little bit of an about blurb for who I am, a email list sign up, which doesn't work at this point, but definitely uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be looking into making this work and doing a tutorial on that. Um, all my social media following down here. And then that's the home page. So I have an about page. I didn't do anything on here yet, but that's just, you know, typing some stuff up. Um, I set up the blog page to look like this and the contact page with an actual contact form that does not yet work, but I just have to make a connection to my email server. So how did I get to this point? So let's go into our WordPress admin dashboard. So that's just your website, wp-admin. And let's go over to the appearance and customize. So in here is where the majority of your customization will take place, but not everything. It's all, it's, I'll be honest, it's scattered all over the place and it's kind of hard to follow, but that's kind of why I'm making this video to help you guys figure everything out. Um, so let's just look through here. The site identity is, you know, you got your site title and your tagline. And the, the tagline will show up. Let me just show you real quick. So Tony Travels. Dot com. That's where your uh, site tagline shows up in the tab up here. Um, so you can customize those as needed. The layout, um, I don't think I changed too much here. I think in the blog, and we might have done this last time, I unchecked all of these guys, uh, set the word count to zero. This is still in our archives. And when we click on a blog post in here, you'll see that the, um, the site, what are they called? The featured image appears above the title, which is right here. So I think we were pretty much at this point last time, but this is this is kind of how a blog post looks. And down at the footer, uh, to get this little time stamped copyright 2020 in your site name, it looks something like the name of your site, percent copy, percent, and then a space, percent current year. So um, basically putting that in will update this down here. Let me just show you. This real quick. So my site, and you'll see it update right away. Um, there was a, so let's look into this right now. So this looks all good. We didn't make any changes, but the one thing that I really wanted to show you guys is these, um, well, let's go into the generate press, uh, tab here, I guess something called elements. And this is really where a lot of the customization comes into play. So if you go through that menu that we're just at, Appearance Customize, you won't find anywhere how to like change this image right here, right? That actually happens within the Elements page here. So the, the home header, if we edit that, this is where it says Tony Travels, and that is right here, Tony Travels, and learn how to travel the world on a budget learn how to travel the world on a budget. So this is um, this comes with the site library that we installed. And what is the name of the site library? Let's let's check that real quick just to make sure we're all on the same page. So if we go back to generate press and the site library, um, it doesn't tell you. I think it was like Wordsmith 
if I'm not mistaken. Can I do a control find word smith? Yes, it was wordsmith. So that's the site library. I don't even know what these are called, like pre-configuration that I'm using. Um, so we're having, we're using wordsmith and then within wordsmith we come with these elements that you have already um, built into that. So that's a long way of saying if you want to change the text right here, then you come into here under the home header and you update it as needed. So again, let me just, just to prove this is what we're looking at, my site, let's update that. And if we refresh this page, that'll change to my site. Same thing with the, the text underneath. So we're gonna put that back to where it was, Tony Travels. And um, in addition to that, there's a whole bunch of other settings down here. So one of the things that I changed was the custom image. All you have to do to do that is um, upload something to your media library. I uploaded this really cool panorama and then set that as the background image. It's really that easy. I think, oh, and I actually enabled this parallax effect. So without that checked, we'll go ahead and update that. Without the parallax option checked, looks like it's taking a lot. This is what it looks like with um, it checked. You kind of like move the page and you start hiding the image as you scroll down. Why is this not working? Let's go to a different network and see if that helps. Let's continue. Oh, come on. Bear with me, guys. Let's go back into appearance, elements, home header. And yes, okay, so let's uncheck that parallax again and update. So we know what it looked like before. This is what it looks like without parallax. It's just the, the image as a whole scrolls. So I kind of like the parallax effect, so I'm gonna leave that checked. There's also um, a background overlay, which you can check or select a color for that if you want like some transparency, make it black. Uh, let's see how that changes. So we'll save that. And it just kind of like darkens up that image. And you can, like I said, you can pick a different shade if you like a blue tint like for your entire website, that might be a good thing that you can play around with to add a blue tint just to make the text more readable. I don't actually like that. So I'm gonna not do the background overlay and update that. Um, let's see, what else? You can change the text color, link colors, all that stuff. It's very customizable, the padding and all that stuff. Um, the site header, we didn't change anything in there. The site rules, this is, this is where you apply this um, element to. So for now, it's only gonna be applied to the front page. If we also wanted to apply that to, I don't know, every single blog page, you could do that here. And before I hit update, let's just look at a blog again to make sure we're all on the same page. So that's what a blog looks like. But if for some reason you wanted that parallax scrolling in your site title on each blog paste, paste page, um, you could do that here and that did not work. Uh, why didn't that work? Display rules, blog. Um, post. Oh, because it's not about posts, all posts, there we go. So let's refresh that, and there you go. You have this parallaxing header on all of your blog pages and your home page, but not your about page, not your contact page. So you can see how um, customizable this really is with, with these element features. Let's go back in here. We don't actually want this on all of our posts and update that. There's another element in here, the featured image. And I did not want this. Did I want this? This is, let's see where this display rules page, on all pages. So anytime you have a page and a page in my case is the about page, this is gonna show up this really wide shot of this awesome looking sunset. So. Um, I think you can actually, yeah, you can pick individual pages too. So again, highly customizable. Was there anything else I changed? Yes, the widgets. Um, yes, the widgets. So it's actually a combination of the widgets in the menus that I wanna also look at here in this video. So let's see, this is a menu up here. We have home, about, blog, and contact. So actually let's look at that first. The name of this menu is the main menu. There you see home, about, blog, and contact. If you wanted to add another 
item to that list of menu items, you can, let's say we want to add the backpacking in Thailand one. You can add that there, save the menu, go over to your website, refresh, and there is your backpacking in Thailand link. Again, I don't actually want that, so let's click on that to expand it and remove. One cool thing about the menu items is you can change the name of the actual um, label up here. So if this page is called, this page is called send Tony a message, as you can see up here in the, the top, but we want the navigation label, see you can see that here, send Tony a message. We want the navigation label to be simply contact. So you can type in anything you want as a navigation label, and that won't actually change the name of your, your page itself. So um, I don't have to prove that to you. Take my word for it, it's right here. Now let's go to widgets. We didn't make any changes, so that's fine. Um, the right sidebar, that is, where is that? In the posts, maybe? No. The right sidebar, we have recent post categories in the visual editor. Are we using this? We might not be. Let's refresh this. Oh, actually, let's get rid of, I, uh, I didn't get rid of that last one. We actually do have to save that. Okay, don't take shortcuts. Um, the widget, so there, there's apparently a right sidebar, a left sidebar, so we definitely have the left sidebar. It's, it's this is kind of scary for some people, but it's uh, code, okay? It's HTML code. I'm gonna walk you through it, it's really simple. So this visual editor, which is essentially just editing HTML directly in raw, is a picture of Tony traveling in Japan which I uploaded to the media library. I found that URL, I'll show you how to do that. So if you upload an image to the media library, which is this one right here, every image has a link associated with it. So all I did was copied that, went over into the widget and uh, replaced the default image with my image right here. So this JPEG right here, and an alt tag, which is good practice to do, set the width, very good. And then it says, who is Tony and the little blurb in the beginning of the video that I talked about, which is right here. So this is this square rectangle box. This is the code behind it. And finally, this read more label at the very end links to the about page. So that's where you see the href is equal to slash about. So that's that little block right here. And then this final little block is that email list, which is not hooked up yet but that comes right under here. Once you stay in touch, sign up to receive my latest travel updates and posts. So that's what that looks like. Again, stay tuned for that tutorial. Um, and if you wanted to add something else, you can do that too. So what do we wanna add? Let's add um, a search, search bar, search box. Let's add it to the left sidebar. And add the widget. And we'll call it search. Save. So if we go back here, now we see a search box down here. It's really that easy to add um, different elements to your sidebars and all that stuff. So don't want this, delete. We actually do have a search box up here that I added to my header. So you can click here, search Thailand. And it'll return all the blog posts and pages that have Thailand in it. How did I get that search box up here? I believe that's in, and this is where it gets kind of confusing because you don't really remember where everything is, but I think that's in the customize and under menus, main menu. It's not in here but you would, ex you would think it would be in here because you have home about blog contact, home about blog contact. It's not there. Um, so it's not in the main menu. Menu locations view all menu, main menu, off canvas menu. Off canvas menu is, uh, sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Let's pause this for a second and I'll be right back with you. Bye. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, my mom called, that's all. Um, I wanted to just show you what I was saying, that was the off canvas menu. If you wanted that to be different from your main menu, um, this is that when you're on mobile 
it kind of comes in from the side. They call this three little line menu um, a hamburger menu. You probably saw that on other websites and apps and stuff like that. So uh, what were we looking at? This is, this is probably the last thing we'll look at in this tutorial, how to get the search box bar up there. So if it's not under menus, is it under widgets, header? No. Uh, top bar? No. Uh, off given panel? No. Footer, it's not gonna be under the footer. But if you wanted to see, uh, that's where the social icons are, by the way. the These guys with my links to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and you can pick a whole ton of different social media and not only just social media, but just like, well, I guess Twitch and Vine, but like, I saw like, was it Wikipedia? No, like a website, WordPress, iTunes, GitHub, that's, that's code. Um, so any of those links that you want to put down there. Where, I'm, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed where, oh, and that's, that's how I put, want to follow, want more, follow me. That's how I put that, just simple text. Um, I'm embarrassed because I can't find where I put the, or how I put that search box up there. I'll find it for you. Give me a second. Okay, guys, so I'm back and I found it. Thank goodness. It is under the appearance customization uh, layout here. And you want to go to layout, primary navigation. And then under here, one of these is navigation search. So to enable it, you select enable it. To disable it, you do that and it's gone. So we want that enabled. And you see the magnifying glass there. Okay, I think that's enough for this tutorial, um, this walkthrough of my travel blog post setup using WordPress, using a general WordPress theme. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. If I miss something that you need to figure out how to change, um, I'll be more than happy to help you out, point you in the right direction with that. So uh, yeah, if you got any value out of this today, definitely consider subscribing. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.